Wow. Uh, hello, I'm David Pogue. I'm a uh, correspondent for CBS Sunday Morning. <coughs> I'm coming to you live from a parking garage near LAX, the LA airport. Uh, I thought I was going to make it to uh, the Delta Sky Lounge, which has soundproof booths for doing this kind of thing. And LA traffic did not allow that. So here we are in a rented fire engine red Mustang, which is the... <laughs> what avis gave me it is so not what i am uh anyway uh we're here to talk about the future of artificial uh, of augmented reality and you know augmented reality has been simmering away for quite a while um but it seems like apple's vision pro goggles really have kick-started interest uh let's see if i can share my screen okay let's go to I'm told that I can't go full screen in this uh, in keynote, so we'll just do it this way. Um, so, first of all, a quick definition: the different difference between virtual reality and augmented reality. Virtual reality is what Facebook Meta has been working on. It's where you put on a set of goggles that are opaque, uh, so you can't see anything around you. I, I love their their Christmas. TV commercial a couple of years ago where they showed, uh, oh no, sorry, that was Samsung. They make a similar one. They had the grandfather wearing these things in the living room on Christmas morning, you know, marveling at the space and the whales and the other cool things it was showing him. But the key to that commercial is what were the other family members doing on the couch? They were laughing and clapping, of course, but they were waiting for their turn. So virtual reality is completely isolating. It cuts you off from anybody else with you. Um, they can't see what you're seeing. They can't share what you're doing. Um, and in my opinion, that's why it hasn't really caught on in a big way. Obviously, gamers like it, but it's not nothing like the promise of it. What Apple has been working on uh, and Microsoft are augmented reality. That's shown here on the right. That's where the computer's graphics and text are superimposed over the real world of your environment. Uh, there's a big difference, and we'll get to that. So virtual reality is like this. This is a good use case. It's like visiting a, um, visiting a real estate listing without having to actually go there, right? You can look around. When you turn your head, the view changes to a walkthrough and so on. Um, augmented reality is different. So augmented re reality requires some kind of device like a phone or a tablet or glasses or goggles to add computer graphics on what you're seeing around. And some of the best success stories so far are, of course, the Snapchat filters. And all you have to do is open your mouth. Ah! <laughs> oh, my God. It's so scary. Look at my teeth. You guys want to know what I had for dinner last night? Skittles. <laughs> so hours of fun for the whole family i love these reaction videos they have children and pets trying to understand what's happening How was school today? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> so anyway, uh, the, the big breakout for AR was Pokemon Go. Remember a few years ago where you go out in the real world and you try to capture Pokemon Go critters. It, for one magical summer, it got people out of their homes. It brought kids to the parks. It was really kind of cool. Um, one of the best uses of augmented reality is live view in Google Maps. You come out of the subway. You don't know which way to walk. You don't have your bearings. So it puts these giant AR arrows pointing you in the direction of your path. It's really fantastic. And I'll never come out of a New York sub subway again not knowing which, I'm facing, which way I'm facing. There are these great measuring apps. This is built into the iPhone these days.
So uh, this is a cool app. This uh, lets you use augmented reality to map a room and it's going to build the floor plan for you with exact measurements like that. Um, this is a cool app. This uh, lets you preview a tattoo that you're con contemplating getting. Shows you exactly what it would look like. You make some ink marks on your skin so that the camera has something to look at for reference. And there you go. It's not all phone apps. Um, Microsoft has been marketing this strange AR glasses thing called the HoloLens for a few years. And uh, it's basically a precursor of, of Apple's goggles that we'll get to in a minute. Um, I did a story on this a few years ago for CBS Sunday Morning. And uh, one of the most interesting things was I, I grew up in Cleveland and the, the big, big deal college there is Case Western Reserve. They were building a new health campus. It looks like this. And they planned for the first time in the hundred years of medical school history, they planned not to have a cadaver lab. Instead, they're going to use HoloLens. Here's a little clip. So let's go ahead and get in. Oh, hello. There's a dude here. Uh, right brachiocephalic trunk. In Ohio, Case Western Reserve University Medical School and the Cleveland Clinic have teamed up to create an anatomy curriculum. The internal thoracic arteries, which are rising from the subclavian arteries, they pass down on either side of the sternum. The school plans to replace the traditional cadaver lab used for anatomy classes with clean, upright, heart still pumping digital bodies, courtesy of HoloLens. That's the diaphragm. This is the, the muscle that helps us breathe. Wow. It's a really important structure and it's really difficult to see in a cadaver. Because there is a difference between a human body that's a corpse and a human body that's living and breathing. I mean, it has electrical activity in the brain and the heart uh, and so on. So I, I think that's got a really compelling use. Right, I'm going to pop back into Chrome, make sure that this is working. I'm not seeing anybody complaining. Actually, I'm not seeing any sign that anyone's even here. So I hope this is working. Uh, okay, so um, this is also very common these days. Um, these are um, user manuals, living user manuals for technicians when they're repairing complicated machinery AR can show where to insert something, can warn them of dangerous things that are about to happen, can show you what part you're looking at and where to screw, whatever. Um, education comes up a lot when we talk about AR. Um, this is supposed to be a, a build. This, is, this isn't here yet. Okay. Um, there's this famous argument among educators that you remember two weeks later, 90% of what you encountered when teaching someone else to do it. 75% you remember when you did something yourself and so on. The worst way to remember something is a lecture. Reading, you remember 10%. Audiovisual, seeing something doubles the amount you retain. Now, as I said, turns out this, these numbers, these percentages have turned out to be bogus, but it is true that if you see something, you're more likely to remember it than if you read about it. So that's the argument for AR in the classrooms. All right, so the elephant of the room is the Vision Pro. These are Apple's $3,500 augmented reality glasses. They don't call them augmented reality. Uh, and as well, they shouldn't. It's a horrible name, augmented reality. I mean, seven syllables, really. Um, but they call it uh, spatial computing which is a little bit better. Um, this is coming out next year. And they invited 100 journalists to come to Cupertino last month to try these on and get a half hour demo. So I went and I tried them on. And um, I will tell you that they really are spectacular. I mean, really, really, really spectacular. It's three parts. Um, this part has the screen that your eyes look at. It's adjustable in terms of distance to this collar. And then this goes around the back of your head. Then there's a two hour battery that hangs down and goes in your pocket. You're looking into two very high resolution, resolution OLED screens. Um, next to your ear is a little speaker. 
that pumps the sound directly into your ear. There aren't ear pl- ear muffs. It's augmented reality, right? So it's it's meant to mix reality with the sound from these things. It's a choice. And you hear you sitting next to this person, you're going to hear that stuff. It's like somebody listening to, you know, music next to you on a on an airplane with a sound w- turned up way loud. You hear the tinny after effects if you're sitting next to that person. Um, this is the most interesting thing of all. The front of this thing is actually a screen. And this thing is studded with cameras. It's got 12 cameras and sensors inside and outside. When another person enters your realm of view, oh, I, I should have mentioned these things are both AR and VR. There are some cases where it turns completely black and you are in virtual reality land. For example, when you're watching a movie, maybe you don't want to see the rest of the room. But when you're in VR mode and somebody walks into the room, it notices and it creates a hole in the blackness that allows you to see them and allows them to see you. Now, if you're really thinking through, you might say, well, wait a minute. How can they see my eyes through $3,500 worth of (laughs) equipment? And it's because this is not really you. This is a screen displaying a deep fake of the top half of your face. I kid you not. When you buy these things, the setup process involves it studying your face and making a 3D animated model of you. And that is what people see when they approach you from the outside. That is also what people see when you do a FaceTime call. If you do a FaceTime call from within here, people don't want to see you wearing a headset. They want to see your actual face. So it it generates a deep fake of you. It's kind of uncanny valley, uncanny foothills, foothills maybe. Anyway, these things are truly amazing when you're looking at panoramic photos. They wrap around you. Um, It has two cameras on the front for stereoscopic pictures and videos. Uh, There's no way for me to represent this to you because you are all using two-dimensional screens right now. Um, You just have to try it. But this is like three-dimensional. You move your head and you can see around them and stuff like that. And it's a photo. Um, Movies are absolutely fantastic. You can make the the screen any size you want. Um, Notice that it does this cool thing. If you decide to block out the rest of the room, the light from the movie screen actually reflects on the simulated ceiling and walls around you. I don't know if that's clear, but it's, it's really wicked cool. The, uh, you operate this thing with gestures. So what the, the technology they've really nailed is your eyes are the cursor. So you look at something and that moves the arrow in effect to that something. It is incredibly good. Your fingers are doing the gestures. So pinching, just tapping your thumb and forefinger together, that's a click. So you look at something and you click. And your hand can be anywhere. It can be on your knee. It doesn't have to, or in your lap. It doesn't have to be up in the air. This thing has cameras watching all around in front of you. Um, You make things bigger and smaller by doing this, two hands. Um, You scroll vertically by like pulling a window shade like this, up, down. Um, It's really effective and takes no time at all to learn. This is their vision of when you work, when you're doing documents. You have them really big. You can have different screens poised in in the middle of the space. Um, To to my mind, this is the weaker argument for Apple's AR. Is like, how is this really any better than just having a nice big monitor? I don't don't quite get it. But uh, I will say also that this thing is... It's like a pound and a half, and it's it gets really heavy after a while. I I spoke to eight people, eight other reporters who were in there uh, getting this demo, and uh, all of us got forehead headache uh, after after half an hour of it. So, I mean, it's it's still a year away, so we'll see what they can fix. But it began to hurt. But uh, some of the reviewers said, "Man." I would pay $3,500 just for this. You get to sit and watch sporting events in the front row 
in reality, I mean, it is really compelling. This, okay, this is a video game, but but they did give us a, a sports clip where we're sitting in the front row at the baseline, watching, turning our head, watching the game. Like, imagine the Olympics. I mean, it is amazing. Um, plenty of people said, you know, all oh, so stupid. All those VR headsets have failed so far, uh, to which I would just say, never bet against Apple. Plenty of things had flopped before Apple did their take on it. Tablets existed before the iPad. Smartwatches existed before the Apple Watch. Detached earbuds happened before the, the, the uh, AirPods. And somehow Apple, through sheer force of marketing, makes it work and making them very clean and, and effortless to use. So, I, it's, I mean, these, these goggles aren't going to be, you know, sellers like the iPhone is. Uh, but they will get better and lighter and faster and cheaper over time. Um, all right, so let's talk about the future of AR. First of all, it will always need hardware. So the one thing all of these com things have in common is you've got to have some kind of hardware in front of your eyes. There's the goggles. There's the phone. There's the tablet. There are mirrors now. Very cool. Um, and someday, you know, obviously we hope that it will get to be much less imposing and big and bulky as the Apple things. Uh, there are plenty of companies working on contact lenses right now so that we can recreate our entire black mirror experience in real life. Um, looks like that, they have little tiny organic, organically compatible batteries. So where can we go? We've already seen some of the current uses of AR. Um, there are heads up displays on car dashboards already. So it's only a matter of time before they start doing the Google Maps thing um, and displaying more visual indications of where our turn should be for GPS. Um, Real-time translation or transcription. Can you imagine if you're older and hard of hearing? <laughs> That's the other thing. Have you noticed? Have you noticed that in all the depictions of AR, nobody over the age of 30 is allowed to have them? every single person well okay that guy uh yes it's only for young people apparently but i'm thinking that um you know if you're hard of hearing seeing real-time subtitles of people talking to you would be very useful um i love this idea of real-time identification of who you're talking to like who hasn't been to a meeting or a conference and oh what's that guy's name you know oh hi how are you bob i mean that would be useful um, and, um, these are the AR mirrors. There are actually places rolling these out right now, clothing chains where you can try on clothing without trying them on, right? You choose what you want and then you take a look at how it would look on you and your body. That's pretty compelling. Uh, yeah, you better believe shopping is a big one for this stuff. Um, all right. So the biggest, most compelling thing, I think, for AR is something I've always wanted and seems slow to catch on. But think of the stories behind everything you ever see around you, the buildings, the people, the shops, the restaurants. I would like to look at a restaurant from the outside and see how many health violations they have right now. You know, I would like to be able to look at a cityscape and see what apartments are for sale right now at what prices and where they are and has anybody died in that apartment and what are the health violations you know i just so you know they they talk about going to the grocery store and seeing how long that vegetable has been sitting in the bin and what its nutritional information and where it came from and was it used with pesticide that would be useful um here's somebody who had that idea of looking at a restaurant from the outside although this is in terms of looking at the reviews of it, um, looking in your fridge, seeing how old stuff is, how many days before it makes you sick, um, how much milk is left in the container. Uh, this one I'm sure will never fly, but <laughs> Rita Rudner, the comedian, she, I remember her once saying, the way I see it, after you break up with someone, you should be able to tattoo on their forehead. What's wrong with them? And I, I fully believe that. <laughs> I mean, think of how much time we would save if you could find out what's wrong with the person uh, before you invest a lot of dating time. So like like she's not going to notice that I put on my goggles and am reading her her dirt like, yeah, I'm not sure that would ever fly. But 
it would be a great idea. So this is a video that Samsung put out about the, the it's a concept video of the future of AR. You know, it's a lot of people looking at movies and working a um, lot of smaller forms of glasses. Again, I don't really see the value in, in working like this. Unless, I mean, except that you can travel with it more easily than your actual monitor. Um, here's gestures with your hand. They're having you hand right on your thigh. Watch movies. Um, of course, there'll be error messages. Ha ha. Um, the one thing nobody ever talks about in the future of AR is, <laughs> is just how bad it could get. You know, they don't think about the fact that we still need people who know how to do user interface design. And some of these images are just like, I don't want to live in this world. I mean, it's, I get hit by a car in two seconds. Like there's way too much to read. And, you know, here's this guy using his gestures on the sidewalk in a city. It's like, dude, it's bad enough. People are looking down at their phones. Now we're going to, you're going to have people stopping while walking to navigate an interface? No, dude. Um, also, I see a lot of videos like this talking about the, the potential for education. And a lot of these things I look at, I'm like, what is the AR value here? Like how a rocket launches? Okay, but how is that different from watching a video? I mean, like, why do I need this in the street in front of me or in the room in front of me? I just, I don't, I don't quite get it. I mean, yeah, if you can pull it apart and walk inside a cadaver, okay, that's something, but I don't know, man. I don't, so, some of these things just, um, they just baffle me. Uh, and yet someday, once we get that hidden info thing going, I think there could be all kinds of useful things. Um, this is an artist conception. It doesn't exist yet, but I'm sure we'll get there. <laughs> oh okay swine flu whatever anyway yeah my son was such a good sport for that so there is a quick look at where we are with ar and where i think we're going with ar um i personally believe in ar more than i do vr i think that seeing computer information and graphics superimposed on the real world revealing hidden truths is more useful than blocking yourself from the real world and locking yourself inside a game where you're shooting aliens. So anyway, there's my little talk. And uh, if you're at all interested on in my take on science and technology, I encourage you to listen to my podcast. It's called Unsung Science. It's won five awards, a Webby and a Signal Award and a Dotcom Award. Um, it comes out every other week. And uh, it it's, tells the backstage origin stories of great achievements in science and tech, everything from, you know, how they how they got the Mars rover to land without stirring up any dust to the mRNA vaccine to last week's episode was about how Colgate spent millions of dollars and seven years developing a fully recyclable toothpaste tube because we uh, we throw away 20 billion plastic and foil lined toothpaste tubes a year. Um, and they're not recyclable. So now they are. They are fully number one, number one plastic, and you can just chuck them in the recycling. Uh, happy to take any questions. Um, again, I have no evidence that this thing even worked because I don't see anybody here or any questions, um, but I did carefully leave five minutes at the end for questions. So, um, oh, do I need to click announce Q&A? Okay, Q&A is now open. All questions, none. Nice thing about, oh, Pax says, nice thing about Google Live View is it prompts you if you're holding the phone while you're walking to put it away. That's true. If you, if you keep walking with the arrows up, it'll eventually say, please put the phone flat again so that you're not creating a safety violation. I'm now seeing that some of the chat things. Um, uh let's see still no oh here's some q a yay uh let's see can air help a blind person navigate the world yes oh my gosh i forgot to mention this apple's done some really cool stuff with the current phones uh with ar 
for example, during COVID, they have this distance meter that measures this. Um, the higher end phones have this uh, LIDAR, this kind of like radar that tells you how far away you are from nearby objects. And it would tell you when you're six feet away from a person or how close you are. And it tells you either with a voice or with rapidly uh, re uh, speeding up beeps how close you are. Nowadays, if you can believe it, Apple's phone will even navigate you to the address, not just navigate you to the address you're looking for, but it will tell you how to find the door of the shop. And when you're pointing the phone at the door, it will read the hours of operation to you. It'll read whatever the sign says. Apple's done some spectacular work for accessibility. Um, Chris says, I was here and enjoyed your talk. Thank you, Chris. Um, Samuel says, is it safe to assume that AR will facilitate the notion of social credit? I don't know what that means. Um, sorry. Let's see. And Ralph says, to the people who predict that Apple Vision will fail, watch the Steve Ballmer clip where he predicts the iPhone will never succeed because it costs $600 and doesn't have a keyboard. That's true. I mean, there have been Apple fails, of course. <coughs> HomePod. <laughs> um, but, and, and to be clear, these Apple Vision Pro goggles were very contentious within Apple. I mean, people quit Apple because they thought it was such a fool's errand. They thought it was a really dumb idea. Um, to me, that just says that the people who did believe it had to work harder um, because the technologies in this thing are insane. Um, I wrote a medium story um, about this, just Google Pogue Vision, you know, Apple Vision or whatever, you'll find it. Um, where it's a lavishly illustrated blow by blow description of how these Apple Vision Pro things work. Um, and you'll see they have literally invented a whole bunch of new technologies just to make it work. Um, it's really, really something. Um, oh, social credit, like the Black Mirror episode Nosedive, I presume. Uh, yeah, probably one of the best Black Mirror episodes ever. It's a world where you give ratings, like five stars. To everyone you interact with, you know, the barista and the guy on the subway and your coworkers and your boss. And eventually it gets to the point where people with high ratings, um, they don't get the mortgage or they get a, a poorer price on their groceries and stuff like that. And there becomes this whole social stratification. Brilliant. Uh, no, I don't think it'll ever happen. I don't think anyone will ever allow us to rate each other, although sometimes I, I think they should. Um, all right. Well, great to meet you guys. Um, I'm pogue at me.com. If, um, if you have any further questions and have a great medium day, take care guys.